hi welcome to the train shop weekly or uh the train Monthly. shop whenever i'm bill henning i'm harry henning i'm Mal herbine and thanks for joining us uh we know it's been a little while uh, long Tactic. while crazy crazy schedules a uh, few crazy things have happened between now and then but uh thanks for joining us if you like the show please hit like hit subscribe tell a friend and all that please yeah, um, sorry sorry we kept you waiting so long yeah, we did. It. We actually did film a uh, show a couple weeks ago, but I had a computer malfunction per se, and and it ate it. Now, yeah, we, we lost some of our, our video footage. Um, one of the, one of the nice pieces we had was uh, Lionel. We joined Lionel up at the Amherst show, and we had some nice. Yeah, a lot of good video on the cat, the base three. Yeah, Dave from Lionel show, gave us a demonstration of base three. Uh, you know, one thing I, he did note that. He's, he told us uh, that the the base three is finally in production. Uh, they're expect they're expecting it in the warehouse towards the end of June. So I think we're finally getting close to a, a base three coming out. It's expected to hit start hitting the hobby shops, I guess, in July. Yep. So fingers crossed. We're excited about that. So, but I'm I'm sorry uh, we lost some a lot of uh, some good footage. I did give give Ryan while I was there. I gave him some some good tidbit information on. Properly painting Reading engines. Oh, yeah. Anyway, with everything going on between Bill uh, running around and myself being at the doctor's quite often lately, um, we've been just double checking to make sure I don't have cancer. And uh, so far, so good. That's about where we can say it, nothing positive, nothing negative, but. You know, right now it was a scare, but it was better to be safe than sorry. So, we've been busy. We've been busy. But yeah, uh, important, yeah, important subject with Harry and stuff. But we're on him all the time. Um, you were saying about, um, you were busting on Ryan about your reading yeah. powers. Yeah, could you give me my little white tube down there? Over my years of collecting writing stuff, I got some. His uh, paint squatches. Some, some drawings that I bought over the years. So I, I got one more. I got to copy and send to Ryan. But GP30 and GP35, the proper where paint goes, colors and all that. I also do that. But also, Ryan, if you're watching, I have something that will be coming your way. I got from a friend of ours, Don Crabtree, from the Reading Historical Society. They're green and yellow. Oh, the and official. they are from the factory yeah, the fact paint they're, swatches. Yeah, factory match. So this is probably the closest you're going to get to a true Reading green and yellow. I know while I was up there, I was bugging them. I tell them I need my U36B. Uh, yep. in, in a legacy version the uh, auto train if I remember yeah right. yeah I want it for the auto train and also um, the freedom train the yeah the, the seaboard they did the uh, pencil bicentennial paint scheme which I'm sure in two years I'm sure the catalog is gonna be full of bicentennial paint yeah, schemes. it's, it's got to be got to be. Gotta finish out the freedom for, train set for, for one yeah There's still a lot of cars missing right Ryan but but the u36b would you know, be a good opportunity to finally get yeah. the auto train out and and it's used on the seaboard. It was used several times, so they did they did it years ago as a traditional, but they need a legacy one. What's neat is so the was, uh, that was uh, I'm looking forward to what, what kind of bicentennial stuff is going to come out. Well, the 2100 being done up as a 250 for the 250th anniversary, yeah, the, the Reading T1, yep, 2100. Yep. And they have some of the paint scheme already on it, and I think it looks awesome. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah, I've seen the scene like I got the number boards or something. They yeah. mounted one of them. So. Yeah, speaking of T1s, the uh, the uh, Reading and Northern's got their all their schedules out. You're going on the gear runs. Yeah, one of the things that I'm excited about is the uh, yeah they have a brewery tour and a for the Yingling. Yingling Brewery Tour, and you also a Classic Car Museum. I mean, this is like my perfect day. That Classic Car Museum we've been to before, it's on the hill. 
And what's neat is that never has the same thing in it because they're constantly buying and selling cars. Now, they Good. might they they switch up for better vehicles. Yeah, but my their... point is this is like the perfect day. Yeah, I know. You ride a train, you take a, a brewery tour, and you see classic cars. Well, yep. And what do you call it? How much? Doesn't get any better than that. How much that that railroad town has changed? Uh, it definitely oh, yeah. has. Yeah. But so, so yeah, all their I know in Rail Pace and some of the other magazines they they have all their schedules and flyers and that's, that's a hot train to ride, man. It is. Well, yeah. the guys gave us every brochure they had when we were at the show. He handed me one of it, at least a pile of everything. So we have them here for the shop. If you anybody wants to stop and get them from here, or whatever they have. Them. All good stuff. Uh, speaking of beer, our friend Andrew from uh, Ohio. Anthony. Anthony. Or Anthony. What did I say, Andrew? Yeah. yeah. Anthony. Sorry, Anthony. The, uh, he, he said us Collision Bend Brewing Company. Does that mean you hit each other? I don't know. If I don't like it, I this can does a collision into Walt's head. I don't know. Hey, hey, hey. hey. <laughs> so thank you, Anthony. Yes. I we, guess we'll try, we'll try some Cleveland beer. Is that where it's from? That's where he's from. Yeah. Uh, that's what it said, Cleveland. Yeah, Cleveland, Ohio. Collision, Brent, Collision Bend Brewing Company. The Flats. Cleveland, Ohio. I don't know what that is. Sea Town. At smells 1250 good. Old River Road. All I can say is it smells good. Uh. American IPA. Yeah, it looks a little light there. And speaking of uh, things. We've got the classic trains catalog, and this one's it's a about. It's not or a should say model. Yeah, magazine. Anyway, this one's about uh, Pennsylvania uh, steam engines in New Jersey. There's some pretty good articles on the equipment that was used over there, which I thought that was a neat issue. I guess if you're under the pen seats. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, um. Well, Pennsylvania Reading Seashore Line and uh, the Pennsylvania Railroad, which goes over a bunch of that stuff. Trains books, uh, they put out a color expedition of the 1960s railroad. To me, that's when railroading was all about really railroading. You mean rail fanning? Rail fanning. Um, goes a lot of different diesels, you know. Today. Actually, the 60s, it has steam and it, diesels. You know, and it... There was, growing up as a kid, there was a variety. Now it seems like they all look kind of the same. You now you had your Alcos, you had your GEs, you had some, you still had some Baldwins in there, the EMDs, mm. you know, your Jeep 9s, Jeep 7s. Now they all 30, have that 35s. one move. You know, yeah, they all kind of look the same. You know what's funny? You see that engine, that cab that they use now on most engines? Yeah. The very first railroad to use that was the Pennsylvania Railroad. Did you know that? No, I never seen a Pennsylvania Railroad. We yes, have, you would they, have to show us that. But I will, it, it does have some really cool. I will have to dig that out for you. Pictures of all different thing. I mean, Alcos. I mean, they touch a little bit here. They touch all a bunch of different cities. So it's. I I paged through it. I thought it was really cool. I like it has horseshoe curve. You know, and there were some rare, rare ones, rare, some rare pictures of different engines, but I thought that was a really cool book when there was variety of engines to <laughs> hunt down. I'll have to take a look at that book. Yeah, it's, well, it just came in yesterday. Look pretty good. Um, speaking of T1s. Reading, Reading, Reading. Um, came in. I, th I think we have a theme tonight. <laughs> um. Yeah, unfortunately, I did not wear the proper shirt. I forgot all about it. Uh, um, thanks, since Carmen. I, especially since I am. Uh, uh, Broadway Limited just released, this came in a little bit ago, um, is the Reading T1s. Yeah, these things are cool. And they smoke. Oh. They smoke? They, you have DCC, Sam. I, unfortunately, I don't have the D. We were going to talk about running it. But I don't have the DC. I'm amazed that for something that small has a smoke unit in it. That got to be the, at least the whole front of the engine and a little piston oh, in there. I do. I know. I do some DC work over here and really 
Because if that thing smokes like the big boy. Yeah. Because I remember last year I seen the big boy at Amherst, man. It didn't smoke long, but boy did it smoke. Yeah, it was pretty sharp. Yeah, so they have these both with DCC and sound or what they call the stealth version. It, it, you know, it's just standard DC also. So. Pretty cool. They are pretty cool. They're so tiny. They're so awesome. Speaking of Reading. <laughs> yeah. Um, a long-awaited um, Reading U30s from Atlas arrived. Going quick because they can't really get them. Yeah, we actually, they came in. I already, I already sold one. Well, we, we originally sold out before they before they came, but we were able to get a few more. All right on. We have a couple. This is our last one in DCC, and we have a couple, three of them in DC. If you're, anybody's interested, sure. I'd really like to get one, but I bought something else in red. Because when they're doing the auto train. Yeah. Well, this isn't a U30. Big. That's a U30C. Yeah, it's a wrong engine. Close yeah. So we, so speaking, take, speaking of Reading. Take a little test test run. Uh, wow. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Cause I, I'm curious what is how it sounds. We're gonna test run the N-gauge too. No. Nah, I don't. I'm not set up to get all the functions for the N-gauge. Yeah, let's see what your uh, little little guy does here. Yeah, give me give me that. Get your sticky fingers off. You're not that <laughs> true of a Reading guy. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't sound too bad. Like it got some kind of neat functions. You know, kind the sound of quality in HO has come a long way. Yeah, I, I mean, like, I like the little the rumble, the Alco rumble. That's GE. The GE rumble. Okay. The other thing that just came in long awaited yes. is the Reading F7. Ah, these things we've been waiting for these yeah. these bad boys. They're with three different road numbers. Um, there's powered B's and non-powered B's. This is a, a powered A and a powered B. How many of them did you get? Who me? Yeah, one of well, each number. No, I didn't get all six of them. I did get a A. I do B, like how close B, the couplers. A. The couplers are real close, so the diaphragms actually hit come. each other like they're supposed and to. And these are TMCC. Um, rail sounds. They do smoke. The powered unit does, but the B unit does not have any smoke unit in it. One nice thing I like is you can change the front pilot. They have a different front pilot you can put on here with a scale coupler on the front. That's cool. Yeah. So you can put the KD up there? Yeah. Looks pretty sharp. Put the uh, scale coupler. That might be my coal puller. Yeah, these, these are or that, really or that, that too, take the B units and then with them line out cars, they can do the old push pull. Mm. Yep. You know? The old push pull. Excuse me, teeth. 
but no, they are, they are, they did a really good job with these things. Yeah, they are. I sharp. like the windshield wipers. Yeah, got a crew guy in there. Got pretty decent sound. That's. Gonna give them a run. Yeah, give us a quick lap around the layout. Gotta do it. Gotta do it. Gotta do it. <laughs> So it doesn't feel so lonely. No, that's that, that's a FT. Yeah, I know. Uh, but still, FP7 from a third rail. Still, you need those yeah, units all to go together. I couldn't afford two of them, so I just have one of those at third rails. But it's not like they didn't run them mixed. Nope. All right, moving right along. What um, else we got over there, Walt? Let's see a Reading and Northern. We got uh, some Reading and Northern um, hopper car. Yep. Cole Porters. They should probably not stick around very long, I, I would have to say. It's got a little history on the back there. The Cole Porter, technically speaking, is not a hopper because it lacks the bottom opening doors that characterize a true hopper. The only way to unload a Cole Porter is to turn it upside down. Rotary dumper. Which is exactly what happens at the rotary unloading facilities at factories and power plants served by the Cole Porter trains developed by Bethlehem Steel Car in 1978. The high capacity, more efficient coal car replaced these traditional bottom hoppers with twin tubes or trowels that filled the space between the trucks, increasing cubic capacity while adding a lower center of gravity for better tracking. Bethlehem Steel. Imagine that. They really did innovation. Yep. Which sort of cars everybody sees out on the rails anymore. What if they cold. have them uh, spinny uh, couplers? Should. No, I don't think on these. Like the Lionel's does. They have yeah. the, the dump cars. That yeah, they got the rotary couplers on them. Yeah. Coal pile comes out. Oh, I see by the extra space in the bottom there. Yep. Mm -hmm. Neat. Nice. Nice looking car. That looked pretty good of about a dozen of these, right? Yeah, I don't really have but any other. I, I, yeah, I really don't have anything running, running in northern. Yeah, I have a couple diesels, running northern diesels that look pretty nice behind it. Or just put a partial load. Got in. all the brake hoses on it and everything. Very nice. Let me see some. A good lineup of about a dozen of them, huh? <laughs> I just noticed 
only one end of coupler works. One end's a dummy coupler, the other one's actual working coupler. So, I didn't notice that until just you now. Say. One is a dummy coupler. You said it. <coughs> you are correct. Well, you only need one to open and yeah, close. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, look at that. But if you have two dummies next to each other... That's well, not a rolling one. We've got three here. Yeah, yeah well... <laughs> Spring trucks, a little light. Yeah, yeah I was looking at the one coupler, and I'm like, why does that look funny? It kind of might be a smart thing. Less likely to come Less apart. Likely to come apart. Yeah. When you have your 100 car coal loads? Yep. Okay. They're, st they're still sprung. Oh, uh, yeah, nice sprung. looking. They're sprung trucks. So. Nice looking car. What yeah. else we got there? We got some cabooses, I see. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, I don't uh, flip that one over. Oh, I don't want to look at it right now. Why? Because all the Redding stuff that got painted uh, blue? No. No, it was probably a Penta caboose. Um, the premier line of the Northeastern style caboose. Uh, we got Lehigh Valley. We did have some Redding and green and yellow, but they didn't stick around too far. Because Redding just doesn't stick around very long. It's gone down on the bottom underneath. I don't think so. Oh, where is it? Where is it? Would you stick them over here? No. No, they're over there on the no, other side. No, there's not over here. No, they're behind the boxes of diesels. Don't worry about them. Oh, oh. They're behind there, I think. Oh, come hey. on, you're dragging the film out. Hey, I don't care. Somebody's going to, I'm going to have them come right, over. We're going to show the proper colors tonight, Harry. Ah. It's not a Pensy night. It's a running night. Get it straight. We don't Pensy. have Pensy nights. That's because writing out lists to Pensy. <laughs> Not by much. But you got down there, and you also have the Atlas O in the red, red Redding. And for all you for, for for all you Smurf lovers, there it is. Cool. I knew you could do it. <laughs> Somewhat I did it. Like I said, for all them Smurf lovers. Alright, think we have um, uh, a little bit of footage I guess I, you know, I can throw in here for um, Show not, some of what we had left over. Yeah, some from last week and we don't have, we don't have much from the Amherst show but I can show you a couple of clips from Allentown and a, and a couple other things. I'll throw that right here today. Uh, uh, since we're talking about the show or whatever. Um, uh, oh yeah, the, a week ago was the uh, Allentown, the Allentown, Allentown show. show. Very, very big, fairly, not a big show, but a very popular show around. Around the, here, yes. Around here. They do it once in the spring and once in the fall. So they had the, they had the fall. And our line. trade club was there in the spring. This was the Allentown Spring Fall. With our. Uh, with the club. With the club. And I thought it was nice you had your, I didn't think you had, still had that. I'm glad to see you pulled it out of the boxes. I didn't know you still had the Freedom Train. Yeah, it was a Freedom Train. It, was, it ran from 1947 through 1949. After the war. Basically, try to, after the war, get everybody uh Yeah, because I remember I got you two cars for the set, and then I'd never seen the set run. That was the first I saw your set out of the boxes. No, I had one. Reddings. Redding Camelback guy. Oh, you just shared your trains. Yep. Okay. Huh? You didn't give me any videos to share. Sam, you were there like all day. Yeah, I remember when you weathered that one. Nobody shared any videos. Yeah, well. Oh, you can always see uh, Mr. Uh, Sean Connery docking. I do have a good video of video waiting on him. So I'll have to play it next time. Bring my SIM card. There's a couple. Oh. Uh, Pensy and the train nickel racing? plate. A little train racing? Yep. <coughs> I don't know what else I got on here. Four track lift bridge. Alright, 
Let's move on. Moving right along. Yep. Okay. We All got right, a man. Woodside Canadian Pacific Woodside Reefer, uh, Canadian Apples. Might have to get that for my decapod. This one's pretty sharp looking, Canadian apples. Canadian apples. Yeah. See, I don't get to see this stuff when it comes in. You guys hide it from me. No, we don't. No, we don't. Because you you go in that door, you go, you go downstairs, you don't socialize with us. You're like well, a little hermit, goes back down in the basement. Well, I got jobs to do. You know how it is. Yeah, then stop whining. Okay. Then, um, here is a 50 foot PS box cart in, uh, Kind of bicentennial, not bicentennial, but uh, the U.S. bonds of Northern Pacific. Very good railroad. Second continent. Uh, co uh, Gee, you lost it. Second continental railroad. Northern Pacific by freedom. A lot of people don't know that. Northern Pacific was yeah. first went Union Pacific and Central Pacific, then came Northern Pacific. Yeah, these came in yesterday. It was like three, three like four or five different box nice railroads. car. The Chessy one's pretty cool. And then, yeah, and there we, yeah, Chessy, Chessy, I <coughs> hear two different style boxes. This was done two. during the war times. Um, now it's 68 that car was built. Um, With U.S. savings bonds, look at the new building. freedom. I don't care about the build date, I'm looking at the. It's, um, the Chesapeake and Ohio have two paint schemes. Then, where are them cars? They're in the back. I was the probably saving them for last. Okay. Uh, other thing that came in is that's cool looking. That uh, premier twenty thousand uh, twenty thousand gallon tank cars in Dupont. Might have to get them to go. With my what do you call? Yeah, this one was a sharp looking car. I mean, we've got these in a couple different railroad or paint schemes, but but the Dupont one is cool looking. Okay, and this is a limited edition. Uh, falling flag series that um, Atlas is doing. You got Jersey Central. You got some Lehigh Valley. And of course, some nice, beautiful green and yellow beeline service. <laughs> three car set, huh? Yep. So, what are we selling the three car sets for? They go for like 250 bucks or something. But they were, um, what do they call it? Alternate, alternative history. Because, you know, the railroads really didn't have these particular cars. So they call it the alternative history. So they're, they're pretty nice. It's a nice looking set. It's a nice three car set. Especially if you're into the Reading Lehigh Valley and such. Like we uh, are. Jersey Central cars there, are nice one looking. one thing that came, just came in. We're probably not going to get too much into it. Is for all you firefighters, is the operating firehouse. Oh, one of my favorites on the layout. Yeah, that thing's cool. So that has all the same features as the uh, MTH version had, right? I believe. Yeah. Yep. Sliding fireman, digital yeah. sound effects, set for control box, lighting interior, blinking exterior, light LEDs. Motorized I swear the kids room. wear the heck out of that one at my house. They push that button constant. Yeah, the fire truck drives in and out, in and out. Drives, drives from inside out and back, and then it has <coughs> the on the corner has the brass pole. Yep. Fireman goes up. Yeah, and a guy slides down. We're not allowed to do that at the firehouse. Slide down the pole? Yep. No. Afraid you're gonna get hurt? No, insurance company won't. <laughs> oh my gosh. What do you have? It roped off? Yeah, this other door locked. But pretty much if somebody get hurt from it, the insurance company ain't going to get paid. Just, pay. a, just a pretty thing, huh? Yep. Uh, but I did slide down it. You slid down, slid down it before? Yeah, I've done it. Because I remember we, when we had the meeting. Years ago. Oh, yeah, man. We had down it when it was first put in. We were having our business meeting on the second floor and the fire went off. Half the guys went down the steps. The other half, half went down the pole. Went down the pole. <laughs> it was cool. Uh, yes, they, we need to talk about our new item here. Yeah, our new item, one of the things, you know, this is our 85th anniversary this year, so we're looking for new ideas, products. new products, new things to do. So, we decided to get into the smoke pellet world. So, uh, SP Smoke Pellets is making the pellets for us in uh, under our name. So in, you uh, get yourself some Henning's Trains. Henning's Trains Smoke Pellets. Smoke Pellets. 
and these work just the same as the original Lionel pellets and they smell just the same as the original Lionel it's the, pellets. It's the original formula. So it's a I think you guys will enjoy that for those of you that run the older engines and like the old smoke pellets. Come into a hobby shop near you. Granted I gotta say, they don't smoke like you're gonna put liquid in it, but these do smoke like the originals. And so the ones we were trying out earlier, they were smoking pretty they're good. They are smoking pretty good, yes. Yeah, they are smoking pretty good. What else? Anything else of interest that new came in? Oh, yeah. this came in. This is the uh, new Lion Chief 280. It's a Lion Chief engine, it's pretty basic. Yeah, it sells for like, like $299. I, it's got some good sound. I like that. A nice big size. The large wheels. It's not like their regular run with the small like wheels. It looks like it looks like the MTH Rail King. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Might be. This is the tender. This is by the tender and the wheels and everything. Oh, you know what? Harry's going for it. <laughs> well, I got our one here that has over a million miles on it. It's the same. Uh, that's what we're going to find out. Well, I'll be. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, that's the one we run outside. That's the one we ran outside. It has over a million miles on the <laughs> odometer before. Probably. Yeah, that's a shame it doesn't have the, the PS2 in there. No, right? after, it, it, it would tell you how many miles. It on. used to, and then... We, Shortly after the million miles, the thing took a crap, and in, we wired it up so that it just runs. In front of the store, we had a double loop uh, outside. We had that for about six, seven, eight years. Yeah, we yeah, had, we yeah. That, that, engine, that engine's running for a couple of years. It would, it would go out there. And it's some like days, the fifth or sixth set of rollers on it. And the some rollers days we got turn it on when we came in. and It ran all day. Ran and all day. sometimes we forgot about it all weekend long. <laughs> yeah, that, that's happened, but... This thing has a lot of miles on it. It just keeps on going. And it needs, needed some help a couple times. It's neat to see that it's at least it's know, still did, being did, made. You know what made me say it was the tender. Yeah. Because yep. I have a couple of them. You I have, have a, you a have Harley, a or, I had a Harley, the Harley Davidson yep, one. Exactly. And we have one sitting at the house yet, too, up on the shelf. Yeah, that's, I think it's my Pensy one. Yeah, the Pensy one. I want to see how it sounds real quick. That's the one I'm gonna. What do you call? I want to paint, <coughs> change to redding. Uh -huh. Cause I think that. I liked after we stopped it. It actually said we're we were stopped because you didn't get that in motion. But that was kind of neat. You know, it it, it is it see. is just Lion Chief, so you have to, and it does not come with the remote. Usually the Lion Chief comes with a remote. Well, these don't. Uh, so you got to use either the Bluetooth or the Universal, Universal. remote. You know. 
But yeah, it had a little bit more crew talk. Usually it's only three. This one had four. Then it, then it, then it had that one where so it's it stopped. Lion, it's Lion Chief Plus, right? No, no it's just Lion Chief. Plus Lion Chief. Well, considering when the new base comes out, you'll be able to run it with the new base, you know, base three. It's still a good starter engine. It yeah. is. It's a lot of it is, is um, people get a starter set, you know, and then they want to, you know, add another, on to it. Add on of another engine and... And you're not, you know, when you buy a three or four hundred dollar starter set, you want, you're not interested in spending six hundred bucks for a new engine. So. And th this is going to fit around the 036 curves that mm -hmm. you came with your starter set. Yep. I'm just glad to see the MTH tooling making its way, uh, you know, continuously being made yet. So. Anything else to add? No. Uh, I wanted to add one thing I would ever, I. Um, online auctions are always interesting. I mean, obviously everybody. Oh yeah, you got a good deal, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, it was interesting. I was I was looking at um, an engine. There was an engine or whatever as always, but I accidentally found it on one of them. It wasn't eBay. It was another private, smaller auction house. And it was oh, you, a want talk, you want to talk about auction? I can talk about eBay. What I go on eBay? Yeah. The, anyway, on this one, they, um, I just I guess they didn't quite list the title and the and the thing correctly because it said Monopoly five. You know, five car five set or freight, something. Yeah, five car freight train set. You know, it didn't say anything about an engine in the thing, but in the photograph that had the engine, you know. Bill knew what the picture was. <laughs> yeah, it was the Monopoly Hudson. It was a Monopoly bronze Hudson. It's like, sweet, you know. So it wasn't quite labeled. One you've been wanting for quite a while, too. Yeah, I'm not going to open it up right now. But yeah, it was it's one of those things where if you if you you know, you know you hold it there since you got something. I you know what you're looking you know what you're looking for. Something sometimes if they somebody mislabels it, so if yeah. you are listing something, All right, I'll be right back on sale or auction. You know, take an extra moment to make sure that the title is correct because sometimes you get screwed and other times you, oh, you do really out. good. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I found got an engine I've been wanting for probably about a quarter of the, <laughs> third of the price just because somebody didn't quite list it correctly in the title. But yeah, it's a, a Monopoly. You know, I like the I, my dream is always to get all the Monopoly cars and make a ceiling set up in yeah, the ceiling. And the ceilings go around like a game table or something, in a game room. So that was cool. The other thing yeah. that came in I thought was cool was um, the fire yeah. truck emergency, emergency fifty one. Last year they had the utility truck. Yep. Yeah. So now they came out with the uh, the truck itself. So that thing's really cool. Yeah, I gotta get that. You need this. Here's what do you call? Okay. Yeah. What, yeah, what was it I said you got? This is a Tyco Mantua. It is a Tyco, as I would call it, a Chattanooga engine. This is probably the more harder one to get, and much. You don't need to take it out. Yeah, I do more desirable one of the engines and probably the least produced one is step fell. Oh yeah. Uh, I can fix that. Is the Golf Mobile in Ohio. And you people think that Tyco is not holding it and starting to bring up its value. It is. Some of that that train, I was happy to one of my friends texted me, hey, what do you call? Check this out on eBay. I think a lot yeah. of it's the error. Yes, when they, we they, were they, kids, did, that was what do you call? It's the same thing with the um, NPC error, yeah. Lionel. The NPC stuff that I have has been going through the roof. Yeah, that stuff's been, uh, going, going, been really in, increasing. What do you think the rate, price range of that thing's going for? About 150 bucks. That's more than I would think. I would say like 30 bucks. <laughs> No, that one, that particular one, I paid a hundred and two dollars for. That was more of a thing. Did I they wave a lollipop in front of you? No, no. I got caught up in the moment. I did not think it was going to, because my friend Freddie seen him go up to two hundred and fifty dollars. God, that's about what I paid for this big thing. And what do you call? It? <laughs> but but you go look on eBay's with some of the prices of some of the Tyco. Yeah, stuff I know stuff. some of the Tyco, Tyco stuff, stuff is shot up. Even the slot cars from the same era, because it's it's guys like us now that have gotten to the age where we have a little bit of expandable, expandable money yep. to buy. 
the things we had when we were kids. Yeah, I, I did not expect to get it, but like I put the bid in there like at the last second and like, boom, you won. I'm like, shit. <laughs> Whereas I think a lot, like a lot of the post-war stuff, that price has been dropping. Dropping, yep. Because those guys who are kids. The stuff is coming out of the woodwork. Yeah, but those guys, when they were kids, that's what they had, but those guys are unfortunately They're dying, are off. dying off, retiring. And that's like I said, stuff. that stuff's coming out of the woodwork because the stuff from the the 50s and the early 60s, I mean, stuff that was unobtainable 10 years ago or 15 years ago, now is stuff I can find. Yeah, and, it, and, and, it, and it's funny, it's like I'm on a couple of Tyco Facebook, Facebook pages, and there are some people who have extensive ex collections of Tyco. I mean, sort of like, you know, how you see like guys. Like we do with our uh, O-Gage. Yeah, uh, gauge and they have them, well, what do you call it? And, I mean, there's a couple guys I've seen that have, uh, their layout is nothing but the Tyco buildings and, like, the one Tyco set. It's kind of cool and, and and stuff. I mean, I have I have my share of some Tyco stuff that I've collected. Well, I have some of my, you, you know my collection. I have a lot of, like, the Lionel freedom train yeah I that mean, was a big one from when i was a kid so and i seen the price of that at, at train show call, this weekend and they're actually they're not too hard if they're not running they're actually fairly easy to get running so I, I, well i know but like to say i think a lot of it like you were saying <coughs> error you know with the MPC well, well, it's era. what people now they want to live relive their childhood the kids who grew up in the 70s and 80s now are so that era is starting to get really popular and collectible Yep. So interesting. Interesting. All right. All right. Anything else, guys? Anything else for the good hey, of the. What do you call Hey, if you're in, in the neighborhood, you're out of state, stop in, say hello. We got a couple people. I, I, we sort of remember the guy over the past couple weeks. Some people from out of town came by and stopped oh, in. The other thing to mention is our eBay site. Yes. Bill's daughter's been loading the website up with a lot of stuff that we have brought in. Uh, that we have got. Yeah, yep, yep. Check out our eBay site. So check uh, out the eBay site. There's some really good deals on there. Yeah, kind of a, having a little bit of a clearance sale and some stuff. So, uh, yeah, some good deals on there. So, check it out. Um, other than that, thank you, Anthony. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> yes, thank you. Oh, let me say thank, thank you, Anthony, for that care package you sent. Yeah, he asked me about that if I got to look at it yet. And I said, I didn't even know it came. No, no you can't look at it. There ain't nothing in there for you. <laughs> yeah. R wrong scale. And the beer's ours. Yep. <laughs> ah, okay. You maybe can't, maybe can't. the next care package. <laughs> All right. uh, we did, See, he is. We did get a couple, uh, he made a couple uh, club cars for us. Oh, yeah. We'll share them next week. Yep. Okay. Everybody, right, good night. have a good night. Good night. Sure looked better than that Smurf Blue.